This is an interview with Ungodly Rest singer Peste Nocturna on Sunday, March 6th, 2022 by Nick Burkell. Now, what part of Mexico, let me start over. What part of Mexico are you from? And can you tell me about where you acquired your interest in heavy metal? Well, first of all, thank you, Nick, for having this opportunity to talk about Ungodly Rest, our new full length, and say hello to your readers and your audience. Uh, well, I uh, I got into metal music. It like sounds like kind of a, like cliche, but metal music just got into my mind through when I was a kid. I I was probably eight, nine years old, and I started listening to bands like um, mainly glam rock bands. I would say like Cinderella, Twisted Sister, Poison, Molly Crew, Warrant. Uh, the Nelson Brothers, and after that, I just started to listen to more heavier stuff. Sepultura, Megadeth, Metallica, uh, Pantera, and Iron Maiden, absolutely. And that was my entrance to this path that, you know, we are very passionate about metal music, so we keep loyal to the thing. So that the way I got started just when I was really young. What is it like being a student in Mexico when it comes to the availability of music education? Well, that's a great question, Nick. Uh, I would say it's not that easy being in a, um, you know, third uh, world country because uh, the government doesn't uh, help or have the budget for culture in general. So if you talk about music, it's not like if you are like, you know, in Sweden or Norway where you have a great music educations. So you need to make your own uh, effort. If you, if you are into music, probably it will be like the parents helping you out to get particular lessons after normal school. And we wish we have more budget as a country for culture but unfortunately isn't it so you gotta push it uh i would say your wrong way were you involved with anything like having private tutors or belonging to any music schools when you were younger you know i started like uh i started playing uh guitar uh classic guitar but i don't really felt at the time that it was my instrument. So I got more like into drums, for example, at the beginning. Mm. And, and after that, I just knew my thing absolutely was uh, take a chance to sing. So I think it came on natural for me because I used to write a lot of things and it just came more natural for me. So I will say it, it uh, came in an organic way and just uh, learn from different, uh, you know, mentors, how to use better my voice on my throat. And that helped me out a lot. Have you attended any concerts lately? And how are they different dealing with COVID restrictions and things like that? You know, it's, it's been crazy for everybody around the world. And um, we just start, you know, after two years, more than two years, we just uh, need to push this forward. And because of our new full land called Delusions of Fun Induction Voice, we, we, need to, we needed to present it. So we have our first show uh, last, last month with uh, Ruth from US. And after that, we, we made our own show with our local bands. And it was amazing because, you know, people are just tired of being just like in their own houses and thinking about COVID and what is going to happen and if you're going to get sick or you're going to die. So we're really uh, living through the limit our own music and obviously taking care about things, how it can happen without, uh, you know, 
everyone can catch COVID, but we work in and think things uh, to be conscious about how to do it. And yeah, um, not too much people can go right now to public uh, events, but they are starting in Mexico. So I hope uh, for the whole industry, it gets better. And it's important to people to get their vaccines to let things go better. When it comes to horror and occult themed bands in Mexico, who do you look at as the most notable or infamous musician? Uh, well, uh, I do respect all bands and artists and musicians in our country. We have amazing players and bands. I won't say Ungalu Rest is uh, thinking about that because if you have the opportunity to listen to our new full length, we have these atmospheres between songs and these intros and interludium and outro and whatever. And we, we, we love um, horror films in general and absolutely like Chine more desist and I do. We, we love Italian stuff, mainly from the 70s. And we will say this is uh, our biggest influence, at least for our first full length. Speaking about that, um, you very much into um, horror movies from Italy at all? Yeah, I would say mainly, yeah, we do, like from, from you know, from 70s. And well, uh, from US, absolutely from the 80s. So we, we're like old school uh, order and terror films. And we thought at that point that it was important to approach our music with uh, order and terror atmospheres. Uh, and that was uh, a great decision we just made. We, we, we love, you know, like synthesizers and uh, these uh, classic pianos and all, and all that uh, kind of, you know, 70s, 80s uh, music that also you can now uh, listen into new soundtracks, for example. And absolutely, we um, involve these films in a way through our music in our own style. Now, when it comes to your band, um, what song did you have the most fun coming up with the lyrics for, for the new album? You know what, uh, we'll say we honor you know, our lyrics because we are a band that like to be very conscious of, of the things that are happening in the world today. And I'll say uh, the first track that opens uh, the new record called False Belief, it, it's, it, it's a great one. We were thinking about like, um, you know, how we can make people conscious if they read and listen to this kind of lyric. And if you put real attention on it, you can define it by your own way. Some people told us like, hey, this full belief is just perfect. It, it, it can fit for, for uh, you know, religion or uh, Catholics, you know, uh, it's important to let you know you can think for yourself and take the best decisions you have with the with the yeah with the things you have in, in your in your mind and in your hands and just don't follow up things that are like just do it you know like if you anyway you're going to make a mistake it's better to try to make your own decision before just listening and do the thing. When it came to the lyrics of the song, Aztec Offering, tell me the story of what's going on in there. Well, Aztec, suffer, uh, Aztec uh, Offering, the, it's the, the second song we will say, track number three. We were thinking about having some uh, Mexican spice, he will say. So this Aztec Offering is just a punishment uh, from the gods to, to an Aztec that 
made a, a really uh, big mistake with himself and don't honor himself and the people around him. And the gods definitely will go for him. So it, it's all about uh, this huge punishment about don't being yourself. Where did the idea for the song Premonitions come from? And tell me about the song's evolution. Well, Premonitions is a great song because it's like the, the dark side everyone has, but no one wants to talk about it. It's, your, it's kind of your darkest thoughts. And it's important to see yourself in the mirror and know who you are and where you want to go. And if you aren't doing the right thing, it's time for a change. It's time to take the right path. It's time to take the right action and don't just let it go and forget it. And when you have a hard time, just remember it and you have headaches and really huge nightmares. So it, it will say like, if you want to do something about your life, you really go for it. Doesn't matter what people say. And if, if you are not uh, in a good mood, go for a good one, work for it. And don't let that bad thoughts um, kill your mind. Now, you had your, your friend Lorena sing on the song, Delirium of Death. What types of changes did you both agree on from the start to finish of the song? It's uh, very interesting, Nick, because uh, when I wrote The Little of Death, um, we have this, this climax part in the music of the song at the last, at the end. And I thought like, it's so explosive when, when, when the band is playing it, mm -hmm. that something was missing because the lyric, it was just ended before. So, I just thought like it would be great to have this discussion between a man and a woman. And I called my friend Lorena and I told her like, hey, can you help me out to, you know, record this, uh, this fight between a man and a guy. Um, and she absolutely agreed with that. She was uh, just click on it. And she told me like, yeah, let's, let's do it right now. So, was very easy because she understand how these these madman goes really crazy and she she is really breathing this terror in in her mind because it's, it's all about her in the song so it it, it uh, brought uh, a different uh, vision to the end of the song and we just love it now what are your three most cherished albums in your music collection from bands from Mexico well, that's uh, another very interesting, interesting question, Nick. Um, I love Mexican bands. Uh, we have evolved through the last decade a lot. Um, bands came more professional in a way. I will say um, the Funeral Domain by Maligno. They are from Monterrey, Nuevo Leon. They, they do a great doom metal. This is like kind of, uh, you know, influenced by uh, Black Sabbath, that kind of doom, I mean, you know, heavy doom. Uh, it's uh, their third album. Um, I will say which other band, uh, Question from Querétaro. Their uh, last album, it's called Reflections of the Void. They play that metal but they make things really great. They study a lot, they practice a lot, and they make an, an awesome job. Uh, I recommend to you, take a, take a look on them. It's a great band. And there was a band called Domination that published a, a full land called Titans Rise. This is most uh, heavy metal, you know, with a little bit of speed. 
And unfortunately, these guys are not uh, on the road anymore. They don't play any music. And it's really sad because they were very talented. And I think um, they don't have like, you know, the chance to get to better audience. But this record is just amazing if you are into heavy metal style. What is your favorite urban legend or ghost story from Mexico? Well, <laughs> I was uh, trying to think about that one. Uh, I would say I don't have um, a specific one at all, but if <laughs> I was just thinking more about like Mexican culture, and uh, you know, we we love to uh, to make films. There's a film called uh, Vacaciones del Terror. That would be like uh, or vacation or something. It's a film from uh, 1989 uh, where uh, Pedrito Fernandez, that he is like, you know, uh, the guy that eats in the movie. And he's also a singer, by the way. Um, it, the, the, the film is a mess. It's supposed to, to, to get you into terror and horror. And you're going to laugh when you see this film because special effects are just so bad <laughs> that, it, that it comes like, have you ever thought about this, Nick? When some film is so and so bad, it's a good one. <laughs> yeah, like a, the Mystery Science Theater 3000 movies. It, all it, of them are a laugh. You know, it's like you are laughing all the time. It's, it's, it's not even scared and, at all. So... Um, and it's, you know, like uh, a, a classic movie now and everyone knows it and, you know, and, and it's a mess. <laughs> Even the script is a mess. By the way, though, very important. Where can people look up and find your album to order online? Uh, well, we are now uh, in different platforms. You can go through um, our Facebook and that will be on all the rest on Facebook or on Instagram. Uh, you, you can uh, write to us with an inbox uh, direct message. You can do it as well in the Facebook of uh, Mel Caffin Records. That is our label that um, next week is coming up next with uh, metalcoffinrecords.com. You can, you can, if you go there, you can see the logo. It's already uh, uploaded. And it's coming soon. So you have uh, different forms of um, getting in touch with us. And we absolutely can um, send you uh, a copy, whatever you are. We can check different kinds of, of mails and packings, whatever. And our edition for this record, is, it's a CD dual case that, that comes with an O card, a poster, and a sticker. So it's not a usual version. It's it's a limited 300, and absolutely it's it's not just because of gold rest. We think like uh, like collectors will like to have special edition. Why not? So you definitely we we uh, all uh, enjoy to have this this record that was recorded at Test Studio Leon Guanajuato with Victor Armando Velasquez. AKKB that he had worked with with amazing artists from rock and mariachis and metal bands. And also the record was uh, mastered um, by Greg Wilkinson in Your Hammer Studio in Oakland, California. He has worked with bands like Bastum, Necrot, and uh, he also was nominee in a Grammy. Would you like to go back to any questions? Um, and not this point. I think uh, I will let you know, uh, you and your audience, that take your time to listen to our new record. You will enjoy it at all if you are into the death doom metal style. Um, definitely, it, it's a great record to, you know, open a beer or something and just chill out in your couch and listen to it and we hope you like it thank you very much
This has been an interview with Ungodly Rest on Sunday, March 6th, 2022 by Nick Perkill.